Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Yoshuli back with the video today. We're gonna play Shinbi offlane and I have something quite new I want to try on her and I'm hoping and I'm expecting this build is actually gonna do quite quite good on her and that is we're gonna pawn the orb but also sneaking the prophecy in there because for my time kind of testing different stuff out on her and just overall well Shimmy's in the meta I kind of feel like Shimmy is just best put in the split pushing strategy it kind of feels like whenever she wants to the team fight it kind of feels like she doesn't provide as much value as you would think she's not like the best assassin like the Kalari Feymao uh, counter she's not the best like utility she doesn't have any utility or cc to really provide she only provides like damage and poke and it's just like in comparison to other roles she just it kind of lacks a little bit in team fights but in the 1v1 in the team fights i think um especially in the split pushing i think that's where she shines the most so we're gonna go a build that's gonna capitalize on this playstyle the most and that is going for like prophecy especially which um i think if you want to just split push all game you want to try to go for an item that empowers our ability to do like um, I'll basically cast a church tread towers like there is no tomorrow and of course we're gonna go for a more scaling build so we're actually gonna go um like the orbit growth because I think especially in this matchup where we need to build some HP some way I think it's gonna go really really great um for us to just go this whole like um orbit growth strategy because we do actually outscale the fame now he actually has a lot of pressure early on and he will like kind of win out these earlier trades but in the mid to late game we do win it if we do get to scale and not like fall too too behind so he's always kind of chopping my lane and as you guys see so i'm actually in a very um, safe spot to just kind of farm at right here I went for my Q E because like I don't think I need to go my on B necessarily just yet because the uh, fame I was always covering this wave and in my face so I think I can get away with um going my mobility option as a third ability unlock. So just gotta play patiently, just gotta wait to like two-ish items. I think that's when we start to kinda of outscale the fame out a little bit. But we'll see how this kinda of goes in the long run. Nice, we kind of hit him right there, so we actually got rid of his passive proc right there. So when everything goes on us, we're going to use our E because we do get a small shield to kind of block some damage on right there. And all we really care about is just farming, farming, farm, just trying to make sure that we are on top of our game. We're actually going out commit war because I found that with this kind of build, we're going for more watch go wall magical power and we need some sustain with Shinbi. I find the ultimate wall to be quite quite nice for the most part. Like I like this I'm a lot on her and if we combine that with Orbit Ghost we just won't run into mana issues because I feel like Costco is nice for mana sustain but in this build we're not going many costs especially we need more wall magical power um, to make up um, for our outfit right here. And he's actually going to back right there. If the Kame wants to take it, he can take it um, because I'm just going to drop in my wave right here and just try to get a reset for my Akame Wad. That's probably why he did early back. Um, he didn't need the back necessarily because he's unhealthy, but he did it because he's trying to build my race at first. So the same kind of component I'm doing essentially. Nice, we got that started and I'm going to be able to pick up Coldest right here too. Yeah, see what I mean? He's going for Soul Strike, so both me and him are going for our mana sustain option. So we're both trying to scale, trying to get that mana sustain under that belt. And so we're gonna like just see what he's gonna build afterwards. I think most famous offline nowadays will build Omen. That's just kind of like this one of his best items. You get to spam your ability, especially your arm be on the short cooldown twice in the world. So it's just a disgusting item on a kind of disgusting hero in the right hand. So my wave is kind of in the awkward spot so but the good thing about Shinmi is that she's always good at safe farming so what I need to do is just try to last it as best I can. It's, I am kind of hitting a lot of the minions so it will kind of shove towards him a little bit but that's a-okay. I kind of want that to crash that's the best way it's gonna like uh, reset but you see how he's just holding the freeze because he knows that I want to like um, get a reset on it, but I'm not gonna get it just yet. I 
I'm kind of thinking he might actually on me on me pretty soon because he's looking like a little impatient. He wants to trade into me, try to like push me a little bit more. So he's trying to like look for an angle opening, but I'm not trying to give that to him. But rather, I'm trying to get ready for when the do happens. But I'm still farming. I'm decently well. Like I'm down on CS, but this is a kind of bad matchup early game for Shimmy. So I'm actually doing quite good on the CS. All things considered. Yeah, see how he just kind of went in right there. He had level 6, so that's why he went in. And we didn't really kind of chunk him that much because he just popped his Q, so he really just eat up all out that trade. Um, no issues whatsoever. So you have to be conserved on the mana because until I can get my Achmed wall kind of stack up, it's going to be a little bit on the um, like side of how much mana I can actually use. Yeah, I, I can't really like trade into him at all. He very much early game damage is disgustingly good. And Shimmy's other game damage is really not that great, um, especially in comparison. Okay, he's trying to like train to me, try to see if he can find ways to kind of give me execution range, but I have potions, I have my quest to get more health back, so as long as I don't get all in, I should be fine. Because until I can kind of have a lot of mana in my build for a certain core and overgrowth, I'm, I shouldn't be bothering trying to poke the fame out out. I feel like my priority should be trying to last hit more than anything. I can kind of bait this out if my camera is coming in. Just waiting for the wood if he's going to come in or not. Okay, looks like he's looking for angle, so I might actually try to bait this out a little bit, try to walk up. Not gonna be able to really do much right there. Uh, Fame is always just super elusive as well. But as long as he doesn't secure two buffs and my, it goes to my timer instead, I think I actually take that trade. It's fine. It's normally be nice if the offline can get it, but for, for right now, it's actually good for the timer to secure that to at least deny the Fame out from grabbing that himself. So he doesn't create a large XP lead by getting two buffs under his belt. I'm gonna reset. I'm just going low on mana. I'm not even gonna bother trying to punish the fame out, just point the wave like that, because until I get strong enough to actually kind of pressure him, I should not be bothering to try to like um, go in on him like that. So, fame out is kind of routine, so I'm trying to tell my camera to be a little bit careful, because yeah, they're trying to go on the really hard. Unfortunately, he got a little bit too greedy for the collide right there, and we'll just give the kill to Fame out because it was obvious he was rotating. And unfortunately, uh, for my Kamel, he saw it too hard on the collide and was not able to realize what was happening right in front of his face. So, not the greatest because Fame out got the kill, obviously, my jungle is going to be put behind. Because this is what, what I don't want. I don't my I want my fame mob to just get ahead for free like this. And he saw it is, which is kind of scaring me. But I am trusting that I kind of outscale in the long run right here. I'm starting to chunk him. So I might try to get a little bit more um, ambitious with my kills from time to time. But my priority still at the end of the day is to kind of last hit um, with my um, the waves and doing a damage. I might actually have to blink. Wow. He just he does a lot of damage. I can't back. There's just a big wave. I might just have to kind of sit on the tower and just try not to um, get killed. And I know my flies on her, but I had to be careful myself. Yeah, I could just kind of really rotate to that as well. Because there's also little minions in my tower and just like me leaving that when I'm like trying to keep up on the CS and all that, just really bad, right? Like maybe I should have stacked that and went one straight over, but then it's like... Fame Mouse is going to show up. He's definitely stronger than us right now. So we just have to really just play patiently. It wasn't for the fact that we got jump on the Collide right there. I think we could just... Went for a plan to try to get 
a lot more aggressive with the frame up, but because Polite just kind of half HP us, we just have to kind of play back. That won't kill us, by the way. We're not just not nearly that close under the skill threshold. And I doubt this fly is still hugging us, so I'm just going to hit the reset right here. This is kind of like one of the things that I think turns people off from playing Shimmy a lot. Is that she's kind of like that hero you just let yourself get bullied a lot early game just because she's a hero that's not designed really to be a great early game hero. But the payout is really huge once you get to the mid to late game. Like Seven Rock in comparison is someone that gets bullied a lot, but he can sustain a lot. He can go up and melee hit he, um, the, the minions because he can take a lot of damage and sustain, but Jimmy cannot take a lot of damage. She's very squishy in comparison, right? So she has like some of the most plenty weaknesses of a um, kind of like low early game damage, low early game durability, and, and that in turn just makes it really hard to play in the off lane. And that's why like Shimmy, even though she has the easy kit, she's kind of like almost you play like the kind of players that can play her or like the more um, advanced players that knows the matchup, they know the limits of the character. Yeah, I just can't even, like, it's so hard to train to him still. I'm trying to use my E's and Q's, but, like, he just, his combo, like, kind of has HP in me. But it's like, my combo is just does, like, one fourth of the health bar at most. It's mostly because I need to, like, get this, I'm actually gonna go back for Overgrowth soon. I need to get this, I'm online ASAP. And he's just, again, trying to get so aggressive to try and kill us. And all I wanted to do right now is I want the back, so I might just keep throwing my um, Q's onto the way because all I care about right now is getting my overgrowth started ASAP. Because like it's just better to just reset now, get the stack, so I do get the um, vision more on a timely manner. I mean, all this considered, we all even see it with him. He just got the earlier kills um, from the engagements he was doing uh, in the jungle. I mean, actually did a good um, leap on him because you saw that Fema is not half HP and that me puts him in a little awkward position because that would mean that I'm actually, I think a Kali might be on the way. Yeah, Kali was definitely on the way. I was just blinking for the one. Oh wait, that came on the Kali. That didn't win on the Fema, I was like, hope. Nice. Cause I saw the fame out. Oh, fame out still died right there. That's actually huge. Cause yeah, I saw like th there's no way fame out wins that one one with the camera, even though he's kind of in the decent spot. So I just knew it immediately that means that the collide that's right there way to um gain up on the chimera. So nice, we finally got some a little bit more pressure. I can kind of farm a little bit more on key for a while until fame out is gonna come back into lane. And we're actually gonna back for Typhoon, especially since we're doing like a prophecy um, style build. Um, Typhoon just works so so good, and it can be nice to kind of juke some people out a little bit more when we have the extra dash. And like the army battle comes like, coming really nice to sustain a little bit better in these trading patterns. Okay, I think he's actually gonna shove that wave in because he. I think he's predicting that I'm resane, but I'm actually not. I'm actually kind of hiding in the little corner right there, so now he shoved the wave into my face, I get to kind of farm this out on the tower. Okay, I'm not sure where the fame mouse is going. It might also be invading my jungle. If so, I'm gonna have to try to see if we can punish him a little bit, but he actually clears stuff really, really fast. Yeah, I, I think he's on my blue buff, but at this point, I think it's just long gone, so I'm just gonna shove this in. Get this wave in a really good spot before I take my reset. Tower under Still missing. I'm not too sure where he's at at the moment. Either way, either way, we are slowly but surely starting to scale up. Our big power spike is going to be when we get max stacks like this, we get magical power. The next one is when we get our overgrowth stack up. And the other one is going to be when we 
get prophecy online for a magical damage on hit. And at that point, I think we can just go a little bit ham. We can go ham on the fame 100%. Because I think we can survive his initial burst damage at that point and have a lot more higher like damage um in the long run. Because this is kind of like a fame out. This is like a fame out shake. Can he like actually burst me down in one combo before my sustained damage can kick in? And then so this, I don't think he can once we get my prophecy stuff online. And once again, Chimbi is a very strong split pusher. We should be trying to split push um, most of the time. So like, Famous in a good rotation right there. But I'm getting a free T1 tower right here, and we're gonna probably look to get T2 potentially, depending on how fast that um, Famous can rotate back over. Okay, he's, it looks like he's. Went straight back over, that's fine. Let's just take the 5 can. Try to take whatever resources we can before we look to kind of back off or go somewhere else. Still pretty healthy, so I'm actually gonna just keep on shoving along my right here. He is a level up. I'm trying to wait until I get level 12, then maybe I'll step up to him. Maybe I'll try to look for Q pokes. I have enough mana, I feel, at this point. So I think I should try and start poking him down when he goes on me. I think we should just start fighting back, honestly. Are they on the mini prime? I guess I'll take a quick look just in case. But I doubt it. Yeah, they're not on it. Clyde is right there, so they might try something on this left side. So let's get the shot in for now. Okay, I don't know what the, the fame mouse is at, that's why yep, I'm just backing off immediately. I blink because I just don't want to get altered and get a lot of damage thrown at my face. My wave is shoved out, so Fame has to go catch out. I get the reset right here to get most of my um prophecy built. I'm so close to my um overdose too. Being finally finish it out. So when we do back, we're gonna get open enlightenment, and we're gonna get a prophecy, which is gonna be quite quite huge for us. We should definitely fight you till we can. Wait is behind us, so I'm gonna try and move around right like here. Out of that, just to kind of finish him off, except it's not going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, that was a 2v3. If the Wraith wasn't there, I think we'd win that super decisively. Like, both the Wraith and Collide, or the Fame Mountain and Collide are just so weak, right? Like, I think we'd win that if that um, Wraith didn't have to be there. And maybe if the Trimbloss was there, by the way, we could fall out. So they were doing main fine, we have to try our best not to let them do that for free right there. And I think we did a decent job, it's just like, again, the witch just coming in last second really screws over. So he kind of came in with the burst damage to like make sure we can't really stick onto them. I still think they might still like go back on the mini prime. So let's just keep an eye on if they're actually doing it or not. So I'm just gonna kind of peek over the wall and see what's up. Because if not, yeah, okay, looks like they're not on it just yet. But I'm gonna probably like... I'm probably gonna like just honestly... Maybe take an early reset to get my open life in mint. If I if it's a 1v1 with the fame out, I'll take it because I think I win it. But like, as soon as one person shows up, things start to look kind of sketch for us. We walk this way is the question. Nope, he does not. I'll just keep pushing the lift for now because they'll just one away away both the ways and same mouth. Might as well shove this lane in and try to get pressure on this D2 tower. Plus the more gold I get, the more I can kinda just snowball with my um CS because even though I haven't really gotten kills this game, we have been just um CSing pretty dang good for the most part. And that and that gold advantage will really help us out being able to um kinda outscale a bit. Okay, I think Fame Out is gonna be here, so I'm actually just gonna back off. Plus, I have 
my ult alive movement I want to get because that's all that bonus HP, ability, haste, magical power I am just sitting on waiting to grab by you. So nice, let's just get that on the belt. And then for our next item, we're going to go actually um, life finder because we are going for a build that's very much about like um, attack speed and probably scales. You get more attack speed, the more ability haste you get and life finder provides all that ability haste. Plus we get more health and sustain so we actually can fight this more bruiser like on hip chimney playstyle even further. So I'm going to push mid for now. I might actually go back to left. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to push mid. I'm gonna assume that the race is not mid exactly at the moment, and I can kind of turn my attention to um, getting this turn down. I think Raymount is now coming towards me, so I'll be a little bit careful. Maybe I'll back off after this wave. Maybe not. I kind of want to. I need to keep pushing this if I can. Okay, looks like I have a fine night hand, so let's actually take this. Nice. This is what I mean. Fame might bully us all game, but I know. I know, ladies and gents, that we win those mid-game fights as soon as the field scale up. We all scale up, we win those any day of the week. It's just that easy, ladies and gents. It is just that easy. So nice. That should be a free fame too for my team. Waste is mid. I'm gonna go split push left because I want to grab more gold. I want to build that gap even further and I just want to do what Shimmy does best and that's split pushing taking down towers because you saw that on that tower alone we were doing so much damage already and we're only gonna keep on doing more damage after we get more ma um, attack feet under our belts. Okay. I think it's a little bit too risky to keep pushing that one last wave so I'll just take um, my lovely shield buff and then we'll pick our reset right here. So yeah, we are just really cooking super good now with the Shinbi um, build finally. So I think last item, we're probably going to go for Warbreaker or Oath Keeper because Oath Keeper can technically damage towers and that will help us destroy towers much faster or just get a little bit more oomph to our damage. But also Warbreaker and the comparison of is nice for the tenacity and for like the, um, what do you call? For like the ma bonus magical power we can just grab, right? And okay, so Fame is just gonna keep on farming these stuff out. Like, let him have the full camp. I don't care at this point. I want his tower, so if he wants to take his shirt, he had to eventually come defend left and then I'm just gonna run him over, right? There's no point in me trying to chase down the Fame out because he's just more elusive than the Shinbi, even. Yeah, he's scared now at this point. He knows he just cannot step up to us. I'll ult him because I'm trying to just get him to leave my tower, essentially. Yeah, one more kill and you are done. So, he has to take the reset. That's great because what I want is I want his tower. So stop his back right there. Uh, Murdoch Snipe is not gonna quite get him right there, but he definitely just have to take the reset. I don't care if you in this turn, you're just gonna die. Yep, you will just die walk up to me. I want my T2 tower, thank you very much. Yeah, trying to get a little bit feisty on him. He's gonna unfortunately go back to bait guild HP back, so now we have to do the whole rotation over if we want to keep on pressuring, but we have so much pressure anyways right now. It's just absolutely crazy. Like that Fame Mount just cannot step up to us anymore, he knows it. So as much as I love to get life by now, I have to like help my team do this objective, which since we're doing the property should be built especially, and we have a double AT comp with we actually have a disgusting team comp, Chimera Double AT August. We actually just shred this objective. Holy moly. Usually a 25 minute old farm is hard because you are gonna take that risk of spending like 30 seconds or plus more to do that objective. But our team comp, we have just so, so much like high damage, high sustained damage that like we actually just load that objective to pieces. So that's awesome. That is awesome, ladies and gents. 
So I know it's tempting that like we should go group up and team fight. No, Shinbi does best in 1v1. She does best when she's in control of the solo lane and just bailing down on the inhibitor. Like Shinbi is not that flashy kill to really to get go like a whole bunch of kills and like get pencil kills and all that stuff. Shinbi is very much like a tower destroyer, which is like for those people that really enjoy just like um, objective control, lane control, being able to really just have so much macro control, map pressure on the map. It's like Shinbi's that keyword for you. Because I have I have fine buff. I am so scale up at this point. I have like almost 200 percent attack speed by the way. So I'm just gonna just keep on bailing down mid. Oh left I mean. So Feymar is gonna try his best to defend. I don't think we're gonna really tower dive him. What I want to do is just kind of pressure this um tower. Okay, kinda hurting this a little bit. Dang, we need like one more Q and then we can kill him. We have fine buff, so we actually should let us regen back up and then we're kind of cooking. That should kill him because that's the last one. Nice. Yeah. I was worried that he might have Q, but I don't think he has, or even if he did use it, it probably wasn't enough to block our last on the ultimate hit to kill. And we actually just went down the Narvash before he can even go back right there. Absolutely insanity, ladies and gents. Absolutely crazy. So this is actually going to be the GG, ladies and gents. I really like this build a whole lot on Shinbi because I think the big trap that people are kind of falling into at the moment is really Mayukazum. Like, before Mayukazum received its like, 20 plus different nerfs of the codes of early access. Sure, it was a great item, really good to go one on Shinbi, right? But like, but now we're finally at the point where May Coffin is not always like the best item to really go on most majors. We have a lot more majors, so I'm gonna lean more towards like combustion and other alternatives and leaving May Coffin as more of a flex option if they want to make it into the build. So I think Shinbi is in the same category too. Will May Coffin, I think it's just. So of a trap on her. I really don't think Megacosm is nearly as good as it used to be. Because you just see how much damage I'm still doing. I don't need Megacosm to finish people off with my ultimates and my Qs just really slap them. Like, I don't think we need that at all. Like, what we need is just raw magical power to really boost up our base number damage on abilities. And go for a build that's going to allow us to play the whole, like, high damage, high sustain build. While also, like, making sure that we are pretty beaky bulky so when we do have a fame out assassin trying to jump on us we can survive his damage combo and we're gonna let our damage combo be able to finish him off first so i actually am a really huge fan of property right now on shin b because if your other game is just if your other game is gonna be just that bad um on the heal you might as well make the missile late game as good as you can and i think this build especially using the open growth and scaling items like life finder i think this is like the best kind of mid to late game scaling build we can go because you saw you guys saw what happened as we soon as our, our items come online there was just nothing that fame can do he got some kills he got a free early game but it doesn't matter because we do we outscale him with the shimmy pick with this um prophecy item um pick right here so i really highly recommend that, that you guys build this on your shimmy and not the red mega custom or whatever is recommended on shimmy because i don't think those arms are a trap on her and i think that is why a lot of people think she's very underwhelming at the moment it's just like she's all underwhelming at the moment because you because i feel like most people are not building the right items on them i really seriously think this is one of the best items to run on shimmy if you want to make sure this hero can perform the best she can be but enough for me. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me down in the comments about the heels, about the bills, show me showcase. Thank you as always for all the amazing support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.